So our next topic today is on dimension. So we spoke about fundamental quantities and derived quantities. So what are dimensions in physics? Now, intuitively, or from your experience, I would <laughs> assume you would think dimension means maybe traveling to another portal or using a portal to travel to another dimension, like we all see in movies. But in physics, when we talk about dimension, we basically mean, or it means, or it displays the physical nature of measurable quantities. Anything you can measure properly should always have a dimension. Any physical quantity, let me be specific, every physical quantity that, are, that is measurable must have a dimension. Now, let me give you an example. Let me write a fundamental quantity. Mass. The dimension for mass is m. That's what we write. And in some textbooks, it's written with um, this type of brackets, but for the sake of simplicity, I would exclude that. So, the dimension for this fundamental quantity, mass, is written like this. Now, every um, derived quantity, like I said, is expressed in terms of a fundamental quantity. So, these are the bases of writing dimension. So, the next derived quantity would be, I said derived quantity, the next fundamental quantity would be length. It's written like this. And the next would be time. T. I'm sure you've seen this before, MLT. Now, other ones can be included, but these are the most prevalent ones that pops up most often in jam exams and basically in physics. Sometimes you can see temperature, but most often are not. These are the ones that pops up most of the time. So, MLT can be used to express numerous derived quantities. Let me give you an example. Suppose we want to measure velocity. Velocity is not a fundamental quantity, it's a derived quantity. So, velocity is displacement per unit time. Not distance per unit time, that would be speed. So, displacement by unit time. But what is the, what is displacement? It is distance traveled in a specified direction. That means, since we are talking about distance, we are talking about length indirectly. So, it will be L as the dimension. How about time? Like I said earlier, time, the dimension for time is T. And now, I have to take you back to mathematics. If you can remember the laws of indices, when you have a fraction like this and you want to take the denominator up, you have to include a power of minus 1. So, this can be written as L t to the power minus 1. And that is how you write the dimension for velocity. Now, how about acceleration? Now, what is the formula for acceleration? Acceleration is the change or the rate of change of velocity with time. So, it is velocity over time. And remember earlier, we already derived the dimension for velocity as lt to the power minus 1. And now for the denominator, we write t, because remember, the dimension for time is t. Now, back to mathematics. How do we express this as one single expression instead of in terms of a fraction? Now, remember, from the laws of indices, when we have something up and down, and they happen to be the same thing, what you do to their powers is you subtract their powers. So we have L, we have T. Just take one of the T's. The minus one here, this is a plus one, invisible plus one. We don't usually write it, but there's an invisible plus one here. So when the invisible plus one goes up, it turns to a minus one. So now we have minus one, minus one, which happens to be LT minus two. So this is the dimension for acceleration. So, let me give you one, and I would like you to try one as well. So, now, I would like you to try the dimension for density. I'd like you to take maybe 15 seconds and try it out yourself before I give you the answer. Okay. Now, the dimension for velocity 
Before we get the dimension, remember, we have to write the formula first. The formula for density is mass per unit volume. Now, don't get confused here. Remember mass. We said the dimension for mass is m. And what is volume? You can express volume in terms of area multiplied by another length. So, or you can just say, when we have a dimension and you want to multiply volume, we are basically multiplying three lengths or three dimensions. So you can say volume is length multiplied three times. Do you understand? So area would be L squared, whereas volume would be the dimension of length multiplied three times. So that's the trick here. So we have this. So that means our dimension for density is mass. Remember when we want to take the L cube up, changes to minus 3, and we have the dimension for density. Thank you.